Okay, here's my mnemonic for memorizing the toll-like receptors. A toll-like receptor is a receptor here that you can see that exists on innate immune cells. They're part of the innate immune system because they bind to things just naturally. They don't have to learn how to do them or adapt uh, or change their configuration. They just naturally bind. And in this picture, you can see on the plasma membrane, there are two toll-like receptor number four is bound and they'll bind to things extracellularly. There are also toll-like receptors that exist inside the cell that would be on an endosome, and they would bind to things that would be inside the endosome. So let's first learn the mnemonic for the toll-like receptors, and then we can learn which ones are outside and inside. So with this system, you would write out one through nine, and then hopefully just by looking at the number itself, you'll remember what it does. So if we start with number one, one looks like an L. There's a cursive lowercase and a capital L. L stands for lipoproteins. And you can also think about it as it's like a lipoprotein sticking out of the cell. I just think L is lipoprotein. Two, you think of two cross lines. One, two. Those are your two lines. So you see two, two lines, and then the plus stands for gram positive. And it specifically binds to the peptidoglycan on gram positive bacteria. So two, make a plus, it stands for gram positive. Three, you get a little bit creative and look at the three. Three looks like two strands of RNA kind of separating from each other. So you can see clearly that it's two together, but it's separated. Here's the top strand, here's the bottom strand, and they're connected still, but they're showing you that it's a double strand, not a single strand. So this is a double strand RNA, and so that means it binds to double stranded RNA viruses. Four, depending on how you write your four, it looks like there's something attached, a ring structure attached to the end of a stick. And that's kind of what you can remember is a lipopolysaccharide. So here you have a connection, and then here's your saccharide, and it's like a three-member ring here. This is more like a six-member ring. But it's a lipopolysaccharide. And if you get confused between number one, L, and number four, well, just remember that this is a sugar because it's a bound ring, and there was no ring up here, so it's not a sugar, it's not a saccharide, it's a protein, and that would have been much harder to draw a whole protein up there. Number five looks a little bit like a cell body, maybe of a bacteria, and then something coming off the top. And so you can remember that this is a flagella. You can kind of see here a flagella coming off of a bacteria, and that's what five binds to. Six is similar, so you'll have to just kind of remember that this is the flagella going off to the side. And six here, we didn't have to memorize last year, but now apparently we do. So I was thinking you could think of this as like a pseudopod on a macrophage that's going to eat something. And so six activates macrophages after it binds to gram-positive or uh, mycoplasma, and it recognizes the peptidoglycan layer. So it activates macrophages. So you can just remember there's the macrophage, and there's a hand going out to grab a little gram-positive or mycoplasma bacteria, and it recognizes the peptidoglycan. Seven is just a line here, just one single line. It kind of gets wavy here, and you can see that it's a single-stranded RNA. Eight is also a single line, but it's connected in a loop, but it's, it's still a single strand. They're not paired together like three here. So these are both single-stranded RNA. They look different, seven and eight, uh, because this one's not in a loop, but this, this one isn't in a loop, but they're the same, single-stranded RNA. And finally, number nine, we have, if you draw the nine with a little hook on the bottom, sometimes on a uh, keyboard, you'll see that the nine has a little hook on the bottom. Looks like a C on the bottom, and the whole thing looks like a G. So you can kind of see there's a C here, and then there's a G. And so you can remember it's C and G for CPG DNA sections. So this binds to CPG DNA sections. Now, which ones are extracellular, which ones are intracellular? Well, they're all extracellular except for DNA and RNA. So if you can remember that, lipoproteins are on the outside, so the receptor's on the outside. Peptidoglycan is on the outside, so the receptor's on the outside. Same for lipopolysaccharides, same for flagella, same for the peptidoglycan here for the macrophages. They're all extracellular. But the DNA, or so, sorry, double-stranded RNA, single-stranded RNA, single-stranded RNA, and the DNA, CPG DNA, are all intracellular. So those are on the inside. So if you just remember where they are, 
it'll make sense. Hopefully that helps, and don't forget to read the Abbas Immunology book.